Hello. Today is April 14th, 2010. We're meeting today with Mr. George Fender from Loveland, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, George, and uh, thanks for sitting down to tell your story today. Let's start out, if we could. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you're born, a little bit about your family. Okay. I was born August 20th, 1923, in the Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My mother um, was Eva, Eva Fender, and my dad was Samuel Fender. I, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's go into it. I, I took, they, they started out and, and with my sister, I had an older sister that was two years old. You just, there was just the two of you? And, and there was just two of us. Okay. And my, my dad and mother, uh, after I was 16 months old, they got a divorce, and I had no idea what was going on because I was too young. Sure. So anyhow, they, they, my uncle Sam Lampy and Aunt Cora took me up into their home in Green Tree, Colorado, yes, and sir. they already had my sister. She was there, so I was raised. Uh, by my uncle Sam Lampy and Aunt Cora and my grandmother lived there also. Okay. And uh, they took and uh, I stayed there in Green Tree uh, for, it was a, see Green Tree is a small town. My uncle was mayor of that town and uh, he was mayor for 13 years. But anyhow, the whole situation is, uh, I was kind of uh, left out with my mother and dad. I didn't see my mother again. I didn't see my dad again. They just walked away. Hmm. And that, that was the end. I, I was, you know, gone. So, uh, come to tell you that uh, I, I was very interested in going to school. I started school when I was six. And I can remember the first day I went, my sister, she was a couple grades ahead of me, and, and I, I, I went to the bathroom in my pants. <laughs> so she had to take me home. <laughs> and I can remember that real plain. And she had a, they, the teacher come and took me to her and she took me home. So that ended that. Well, anyhow, I straightened up and uh, I, I took and uh, went through eight grades uh, at uh, Green Tree Grade School, and I played. Uh, I was I was interested in baseball, football, and uh, we didn't have a basketball court, but uh, they had one outside, and I'd go out there and shoot the baskets with the kids. So uh, from there, uh, I took in. Uh, and I had a, I, I was just seven, about seven, eight years old, and uh, I went, went for, for, uh, to graduation coming up. And uh, I'll tell you right now that the best thing that happened to me when I was in grade school was, and, and, and that was, uh, I can remember this. I used to go down in the ball field, Pittsburgh Pirates ball field was only about three and a half miles away. And I'd go down and I'd steal under the boards. And so anyhow, the groundskeeper, he caught me one day coming in and I had, <laughs> he took me and asked me what I was doing. I said, well, I'm just coming to watch the ball game. And I can't come through the gate because I don't have 50 cents. It cost 50 cents to get in. And that, he says, well, I'll take and give you a job. You can come help and I'll, you, I'll get you in every day oh, when, wow. when you come. And so he took and helped me. Uh, he told the uh, 
party up at the gate to leave me in when I come. Uh, it was George Fender and he was to leave me in. And I helped, I stayed with the pirates from all those up until uh, graduation and, and I met all these ball players. I met, I knew all the Pittsburgh Pirates and I still know them today. Wow. I knew Paul Wainer, Lloyd Wainer, Archie Vaughn, Cy uh, Young, and uh, first baseman was Gus Sewell. I knew the pitchers and they knew me and there was a scout there and the scout says, I, I, what I used to do was, I'd stay, hit, I'd, I'd go to bat, I'd go up and stand where, you know, and the pitchers would throw at me. And, and they didn't think I could hit, and I could hit pretty good. And so, that, uh, anyhow. Did they ever win the World Series in any of those years? They, no, they didn't win no World Series at that time. But I can still remember um, the... Uh, uh, I knew this, the, uh, the Mace Brown, and uh, he was he was the relief pitcher, and he was real good, and he he liked me real well, and I, I can remember how I tell him I say I'll hit the ball to the shortstop, and they can go they can go from Vaughn to Young to Sewer. <laughs> wow. Space. So anyhow, I'll make a long story short, uh, the the the. Uh, Boston Braves come to town, and the Yankees had traded Babe Ruth to the Yankees. Uh, Yankees said Babe Ruth was with the Yankees, and Boston Braves, uh, they made a trade and give Boston Braves $20,000 for Babe Ruth. He told me this. I met him the day they come to play. You met Babe Ruth? Yes. <laughs> is that right? I mean, this is hard to tell. I mean, people think they they don't know. I mean, I know. I mean, I talked to him for seven innings, wow. and and I can still remember exactly what we talked about and things like that. And uh, so anyhow, uh, I, I took him, watched him. He hit he hit the first home run. I was down on the third base line, and Babe Ruth was right there, and he, I met him. He. He motioned for me to come over and he asked me what my name was and I said George Fender. And he said, Well my name's George too, but call me Babe. So I knew it was Babe Ruth. But I, I didn't know uh, what what was gonna go on. He and uh, and he hit one one home run. Then he came up the next time and he hit another home run. That was two. And uh, I I uh, talked to him and and uh, I, I see I chased balls down on the third baseline for the Pirates. I, I never had a chance to become the bat boy because you had to be a certain age to become a bat boy. And I, I always was getting in any in the games anyhow whenever I wanted to go. But uh, I, I took and uh, uh, I talked to Babe Ruth. He, we talked about different things. And, and I chased balls, picked the balls up. I went out and raked around third base. That was my job, to keep third base clean, keep the, the, the sack down on the base. It would always go flying because they weren't tied down then. And, and uh, uh, so to uh, Babe Ruth, he would keep coming in. He'd go in uh, during innings, and then he'd come back out. And, and if I wasn't... Uh, if I wasn't busy, he 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 kind of wander over and motion me to come to see him again. <laughs> so I I talked to him for quite a while. Wow. Uh, so now you, you worked for the Pirates all through till you graduated from high school. Then, or is that what you said? No, I was in grade school. I was only 12 years old. How many years did you work for him? For the Pirates? Oh, let's see here. I I probably went in maybe. Till, till I went into high school, and then when I went into high school, I had to give it. I had to take and give it up because I didn't have the time. Yeah, sure. But sure. let me tell you a long story. It won't be long. And Babe Ruth, he hit another home run. Three run, three home runs. Now I got the ball, and the ball stayed. I I took the. He gave me the ball, 
and he says, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this ball, and he signed it with a pencil about yay long, okay? And uh, I took the ball and took it home and gave it to my uncle, he was mayor, and he put it in a safe. I didn't know if it was worth any money or not, but he had an idea it was going to be worth something someday. And, and he took and, uh, um, and put it in a safe. While I went, after I went to high school, I went into the service. And uh, I didn't get the ball, take the ball out of there until I came back from the service. Why? But uh, let me tell you, I knew every, all the pirates knew me. And I should have had a witness or something, but you know they're all gone now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you bet. I mean they're 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 dead and gone. And Dad so. still has the ball. So. And, and you still have uh, you still have that Babe Ruth ball. I, I have the Babe Ruth ball, and I'm I have I have. You'll be surprised when I tell you how many people have seen that ball. I don't think ten have seen it. Is that right? That's right. Jo John, he he tried to send it to a to uh, see, get it authenticated, and um, anyhow, some or some company back east, and uh, I'm not interested in authentication because they can cheat. And when when somebody tells me that that ball isn't Babe Bruce, I'll tell you, I think it's the last ball he took out of New York City. Uh, as a Yankee, and and uh, brought it to Pittsburgh, and he had it in a little sack when he gave it to me. I should have got the sack, and I didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, wow. What an experience. But I mean, this this uh, this is still in my mind. Yeah. Now everybody, buddy, gets on me, and and uh, uh, I uh, I'm going to do something with it. I got an attorney down in Las Vegas, but I have I don't have no appointment or nothing with him yet. But he says that, that uh, he'll, he'll take and work with me on it when I want to come down and see him. I'm going to go down there one of these days and see him. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. It, it'll go through more ability. You know what more ability is, don't you? It's, you take, it's just like an auction. Oh, okay. And, and uh, it's, it's something that, that they don't pass. Now, they, they didn't refuse me. They didn't refuse a signature, actually. They, they just said he never signed a baseball like that. He signed it up and down, babe on top and Ruth underneath. And balls are, I mean, all his other balls are signed crossways where somebody is probably, you know, I mean, they don't have that many balls that were signed at that time. And why, why, why did he sign it that way? I can tell you right now why he did. He's in a hurry, and and he's he he had already hit two two uh, home runs. He hadn't hit the third home run yet, and he was uh, he he was uh, more so uh, uh, sweaty and yeah. re really into the game. He's yeah, in the middle yeah. of the game. Yeah. But he 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 patted me on the shoulder and 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 everything, and he said. He didn't tell me it was going to be worth some money someday. Yeah. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I just took the ball and thanked him, took it home, gave it to my uncle, and he put it away in a safe. I'll be darned. Yeah. And, you know, right away. Yeah. And and kept it. I told him to keep it for me. He did. Well, fascinating. That's so, uh, a fascinating piece of history right there. But, uh, <laughs> anyhow, I mean, I, any, everybody, even my boy, thinks that he doesn't know why, why why he signed it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. But that's that's the way it was signed. So yeah. that was a good experience. Oh, absolutely. Now I'll tell you, somebody else that knew that he had given me that ball, you know, I was 12 years old. I think I was in the sixth grade or something like that. And uh, the principal of the grade school, I never showed him the ball, but I told him I got a ball from Babe Ruth and he, I mean, he and I, he, he believed me, and he's gone. He passed yeah, away. Yeah. And I, I guess I made a mistake by not getting, trying to get witnesses. Well, who knew? But, but I mean, Babe Ruth was known to be, to, to really love children. So, uh, and, and yeah.
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. But, uh, the the whole story is, uh, after he hit that last home run, I, he went back in the clubhouse, and that was it. He yeah. didn't come out yeah. again. Yeah. I already had the ball. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was that. That's that's the most important thing that happened during. The, I can remember that. Oh, absolutely. Because I mean. You know, I, I I knew all the Pirates. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in fact, the scout with the Pirates said, someday you're going to play baseball. He says, you're going to go to Sa our Sandlot team. And and I never got the chance because I had to go in the service. Yeah, yeah. Now, was, did, now did you play uh, in high school then? Did you play uh, sports, baseball and such? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, do you think, do you think you would have been good enough had, had you not been interrupted by, by your military service? Do you think you... Would have been good enough to continue on with the baseball career? Well, I know, I know that I would have been in the Sandlots. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the scout yeah. told me that his name was Leo Mackey, and he knew I could, I could stand up at, and hit the ball. Yeah. I could hit it good. Yeah. Dad, maybe tell him about your, in in uh, high school, how many scholarships you got oh. to go on. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go into high school go real quick. That. We can yeah. get it over fast. Yeah. Let's go into high school. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I went to Dormont High School, and that's not in Green Tree. That's about another three miles away. But uh, I had my pick of four high schools, and I picked Dormont. And uh, uh, when I started as a freshman, I went out for football. And and I, I knew I... I, I didn't I didn't never think I was good or anything, but the the coach he watched me and and I made as a freshman the first team. Is that right? Yeah. Like, I mean they had and they had a good team too because uh, th that was in 1938. Yeah, 1938. Okay. How many scholarships you had uh, coming out, Dad? So, uh, anyhow, I I went I went four years uh, in 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 high school. I made I I played four years and I got four year, four letters as a fresh from freshman to senior for football. I got four letters from basketball. Wow. And straight through. Uh huh. And I and I got. The last two years, I got I went out for track and baseball, and I got a letter in each one of those, and then that that so that put me up to where I got uh, twelve letters in high school. Wow! And I was voted the best athlete in the class. Is that right? Yeah. Wow! On the team, I kicked kicked a, I could kick field goals real good. I used to challenge everybody on the football team kicking for milkshakes, <laughs> and, and guess what? I I would I would win. I knew I could win. I could kick. I kicked. Uh, I kicked the winning football against the team for, and we won it three nothing. It was a real good team. Ah, uh, wow! And I can still remember. Wow! That uh, that that kick. So, so uh, all your sports. With all your sports in high school, it sounds like it led to a lot of uh, scholarships. Yes, I I was offered uh, I, I, from really as offered from five six schools, but five different schools. Pittsburgh University, they offered me a scholarship, and they told me that they would send me to their to Waynesburg College for two years, like they do today, uh -huh. for preliminary work you know mm -hmm. so I told him uh, I didn't accept him right then and there because Michigan come and, and picked me up and took me out to wow. Michigan and they wanted me to come there and uh, Ohio State was after me wow. and uh, there was uh, West Virginia was after me and Fordham was after me Wow. there was five of them but I took Waynesburg College because, for one simple reason, uh, I used to go watch Pittsburgh play, the Panther, they called them Pittsburgh Panthers, and uh, uh, the, I got to know the coach real good, and, and, uh, and it's, I was only a kid, 
and he played at the same stadium where the Pirates played. And he said, he, he told me, he said, someday you'll play for Pitt, won't you? And I said, well, I'd like to. <laughs> and he says, okay. He says, I'll set it up for you, and what do you want to do, you know? And I, I, I told him, I said, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, you know, but I said, I said, I'd like to go to dental school. He said, okay, I'll fix it up. He fixed it up for me. Wow, wow. And had it arranged to where I could go to Waynesburg College, which I did, but I, and then I could come back in two years and play my junior year and my senior year at Pittsburgh. So now what year, what year did you graduate from high school then? Uh, the year 1942. 1942. So that was the spring after uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed that, that winter, that, that following, that earlier uh, right. in December of 41. Right. Do you remember where you were and what you were thinking when uh, you heard about that? Yeah, I was in, I was, uh, in Pearl Harbor. We went into the, when it was uh, heard about it, we was in a gymnasium. They held a huge uh, gathering of all the classes and everything and that was that didn't last long at all but uh, that's when i found out that pearl harbor had been bombed you know and and then and i knew that the draft was coming and and you were 18 at that point so i was going to be 18 yeah. august and and uh, they uh, instead of going to the draft I, that's why I enlisted in '42. I mean, I I went down and and beat them by a, by a few days. Enlisted in the Army Air Force. Uh, now, when you went to college, was that were you able to get a deferment then? When you enlisted in college, when you went to college, or no, I didn't get a deferment, but they let me play. They told me I could play five games. Well, I got six games in the time before I had I. I, I was scheduled to go 31st, but I did play five games uh, as a freshman at Waynesburg, and I lettered right there. And I was on the first team. I made the first team down there. And the first game was in Pittsburgh. Well, so now, uh, so you're in college, and then, but you you were you enlisted in the Army Air Corps, and you knew you were going to ship off at some point, or in the Air Corps. When well, I didn't know if I'd ever go overseas or not at that but, I mean, time. But you knew that you were going to be pulled from college and would have to go off and serve. Right. So, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but you just didn't know when. Did they tell you uh, uh, when you enlisted? Okay, you're going to you're going to yeah. go off at uh, a certain point, or did you know when you would be leaving college? Okay, they told me uh, they shipped me to Miami Beach, Florida, to take tests and in, in my basic training. Now, of, of all the, the various service branches, how did you come to choose the Army Air Corps? The Army Air Corps? Well, uh, I, I couldn't swim real good, and I didn't like water too well. So that ruled out the Navy, huh? That, that, that kind of ruled the not Navy out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, terrified of it. <laughs> that was a mistake, though, because when I ended up in the war, I ended up down the South Pacific. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I flew over water on every mission. <laughs> so that was, that really, really got me. You know. So, uh, so you enlisted, uh, you went off to college, you, you played in, uh, through the fall, got five games in, and then you shipped off to Miami? I, I shipped off, uh, for, for to, basic? To Miami Beach, Florida. Got down there, I took all my tests, everything, and I think I went on one hike, and they give me my shots and everything, and they came back and, and, uh, told me that uh, I did real well on the test and everything, and they said, you're, you're gonna, we're gonna ship you out to uh, OCS, which is Office, Officer Training School. And, and, and uh, they shipped me up to Fort Collins, Colorado. And, and, to, and I went to Engineering and Operations School in Fort Collins. Here at, at the A&M? It, it, it was at Colorado Aggies at that mm -hmm. time. And, uh, uh, I went up there, and I, I was only up there for about, oh, let's see, I guess around five or six months, and, and maybe, maybe a little longer, but they took, and uh, uh, I went through the schooling, it was real good, and I liked it real well, and, and that, and 
That's where I met my wife, Dorothy. Oh, wow. And <laughs> Landon there probably. Uh, but, um, she, she was a co-ed at, at the A&M? No, she wasn't going to school. Uh, her mother, her mother, and her came down from the ranch. They, had, her mother and dad, owned a small ranch up in the hills, in in Pingree Park. That was where Colorado State had had a uh, owned some mm -hmm. land up there too. But um, anyhow, the whole deal is, she was serving food to the soldiers as they went around. You know, you take, you pick up a tray and. And everything, and she she threw your food in. I I got to kidding with her and checking with her and and uh, and talking to her and all. And so pretty soon, we we uh, her mother was really a guarding a guarding. Uh -huh. She she didn't let her go out only at seven o'clock in the evening. But I I told her I'd, I'd walk home with her and her mother, and I I'd go up there and. When I got a chance, and I'd walk them home to where they lived, they lived in this house with the, with a, a that a lady owned, in, in Fort Collins there, an apartment, and and uh, so anyhow, we, we got we got to like each other real well. We used to ride around in Fort Collins in the trolley trolleys, those uh, I don't know if you remember those or not, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, we'd ride around in those and then get off at the park and then wait till they come back and 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 uh, We we got real friendly with each other and in those days. It was different. You didn't you weren't really you know uh, But we we made we we talked and 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 uh, We'd go get milkshakes and her mother got to trust me and 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 she wouldn't let her go with every soldier that wanted to date her. Sure. And she did, in fact she didn't go with anybody. And, and uh, I fell in love with her. <laughs> and she fell in love with me. Wow. And that was where it all started. And 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 we she she uh, took and took me out for Thanksgiving dinner with her mother and dad and and uh, to to. Their uh, Aunt Rose and Uncle Jim's place in Fort Collins, and and we had a nice Thanksgiving dinner and everything. And then when Christmas, so I kept going in and getting uh, my dinners from her and that, you know. Uh -huh. But here, here comes around Christmas, and she ended up and invited me out again. Her mother. And they both got attached to me real good, <laughs> and, and they both liked me, and and so anyhow, Dorothy and I we planned. I didn't know when I was going to ship out, but they planned it. And the army, I told, I finally told her. I said, well, I I guess we're gonna, I'm going to be leaving, and and it kind of hit her pretty hard, and and I told her, I says, I'm going to end up going overseas. I don't know what, when I'm going, but I know I'm headed there. So, anyhow, she uh, she took and we talked things over and everything. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, if I come back from overseas, I'll I'll be back here to marry you. And she said, she said, you proposing? And I said, yeah. She said, okay, I'll wait for you. Wow. So, wow. so she waited for me, and she waited for over two years until I came back from the war. Wow. And and. Uh, she wrote me down in South Pacific. She's the only one I got letters from. Actually, my parents back east, my uncle and aunt, they they didn't even write me. My sister didn't write me, and and uh, my mother, I never heard from her, and I never heard from my yeah. dad. Yeah. I mean, my dad was he was in in the FBI. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, he was an mm. FBI man on on the railroads. Mm. He worked the railroads. And uh, and I, I don't know what they thought, what their bearings were. Yeah. I mean, I I just didn't have nothing to do. I only saw my dad, I think about oh about six seven times in my life. Mm -hmm. And as far as my mother goes, I'd say ten. Mm -hmm. Wow. And 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 uh, so I I uh, when I left 
when I left uh, Green Tree, my home, uh, I, I didn't know I, how things were going to work oh, out. Oh, sure, yeah. Sure. You know, it, but it worked out. Yeah. Everything worked out. Yeah. And Dorothy kept in touch with me. Now, uh, when did you leave Fort Collins? And where did, when did you leave Fort Collins, and where did you go from, uh, from Fort Collins then? From Fort Collins? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I uh, went from Fort Collins, uh, let me think here, down to Keesler Field, Mississippi. Uh, they, they sent us down there, and um, I, 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 I took five, five months of, uh, five months of uh, uh, airplane mechanics. That would qualify me, you know, good. And they knew I was interested in airplanes. And, uh, what, what was your ultimate goal to become? Were you, uh, a crew chief, or what were you? Uh, looking? Engineer. Engineer. Okay. Yeah. Light engineer. Okay. Yeah. Engineer in operations. Like operations is handling the tower, calling airplanes oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. in the land and and telling them when to take off and things like that. Okay. But I I I wanted I I just wanted to fly. Yeah. And yeah. And, and so in nineteen. Forty-three. Uh, after I left, I left, uh, and and uh, after I left Fort Collins, I went to the uh, Air Mechanic School for five months. And from there, there they jumped me into Tyndall Field, Tyndall Field, Florida, for uh, gunnery school. And I went. I finished gunnery school. While he was there, tell him what happened to you while you were there. And where and whereabouts? What happened to you when you were in Florida? Oh, well, we went from gunnery school down to Montbrook Air Base, and uh, uh, we were flying in B-17s then. And and uh, I, I everybody liked the B-17s, but when after I flew the 24, I got into 24s. I liked the 24s. But the crash. Huh? The crash. The what? The crash. You crashed. Oh. Yeah, we, we, we took and uh, we were, we were, um, we, we were flying YB-40s, that's B-17, experimental airplanes, and they, they hadn't even got to England yet, the B-17s, and, and uh, uh, anyhow, the YB-40 was, was, uh, uh, preliminary and and we were training and, and one day we was taken off for uh, we were going out over the Atlantic on we, we'd go out over the Atlantic about maybe a couple hundred miles and turn around and fly back and come in uh, I uh, we, we were taken off and going and when we was going down a strip we couldn't get airspeed we lost our airspeed and if you don't have airspeed, you don't know what, how fast you're going. But we knew we were going fast enough, so the pilot tried to, tried to pull it up at the last minute. He should have aborted it and stopped. But when he, when he pulled up uh, to go up, he clipped the, air, the trees okay. at the end of the strip. And when we hit those trees and bushes, it made us go down. And uh, we crashed, and uh, I was lucky. Uh, four, four got killed in it. Oh my! Oh wow! Yeah. You were in the hospital for quite a while. Huh? You were in the hospital. Do what? You were in the hospital. Yeah. Where yeah. Where were you in the in the plane one? <laughs> I was in in the back. Luckily, I was in and I was getting bounced around like a ball, and I. So anyhow, we we uh, ended up in a swamp, you know, in a swampy area, and that's luckily because we didn't catch on fire. But I I took when we did boy, we was hitting trees, and then all of a sudden we was hitting a lot of brush and everything on the ground. And I and when it stopped, uh, I just rolled out of the airplane. Mm -hmm. I rolled out the I went I just dumped myself out the window the, uh, the, uh, and where the guns stick out and, and uh, the uh, crash outfit come after us you know and I, I 
crawled over quite a ways to get over in case of fire or something. How badly injured were you? Yeah, I was I was injured pretty seriously, hmm. and I they sent me to the they put me in a, a in a uh, uh, ambulance and they drove they drove me to the hospital in Orlando, Florida, uh, real quick, and and uh, so uh, anyhow I ended up in Orlando, Florida. Uh, first, I went to a little hospital on the base, and then they put me in a. After they fixed me up and followed, I had some cuts on me and things like that, and then they took me up to Orlando, Florida, and I was in the hospital up there for a little boy, forty-one days, I think. Oh wow! Yeah, it was forty-one days, and uh, I, I, when I got out, the uh, they. I was injured internally mostly, and and had bruises and all over me, you know, and and uh, had I had a broken wrist here. But any the the, uh, the best thing, the the uh, officer came around and he says, uh, "Are you through flying?" And I says, "No, I'm not through." He says, "I said why." He said, well, I thought maybe this ended that you're flying. And I said, no. I said, he says, well, we're going we're gonna to get you and take you up in the air. So they took me back up in the air again and, and make me see if I wanted to continue or not. Trying to get back, yeah. put you back on the, in the saddle again to see. Yeah. You know. Now, so, let me ask you, uh, prior to the service, had you ever been up in an airplane? No. No. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. But, you know, they put me... Uh, in in uh, B-17 still, and we flew all, we flew all, all over the United States, still training crews. Now, had you been put into a crew at this point, or were you still kind of just? No, I okay. wasn't in a crew at okay. this time. Okay. Okay. And we we were just training others. Oh, okay. Showing them how to set up the guns, you know, and how to load them and. So at this point, you were training. You were a gunner training other gunners. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, I was in. I was engineering though, uh, and, and I, I took and uh, uh, we flew. Uh, I I got in so many cities. It's, it's, it was it was something. Yeah. How was that? I mean, because during that time, most people in your generation uh, grew up. For example, you grew up in Green Tree. I don't imagine. Growing up, you traveled too far away from that area, and now here you are crisscrossing across the United States. That must have been an interesting time for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But I mean, it was. It was. Uh, there, there, all of us uh, that were flying the B-17 knew what we were doing. I mean, it, you know, you learn on the airplanes to check the gas before you take off, and you measure it and everything, and you check. You learn to pre-flight the airplane, different things like that. Now, was that your responsibility as the engineer to do all yeah, that? Okay. I could do it all. Mm -hmm. I, I did it. I could pre-fly an airplane easy. Matter of fact, goes I, I, I at one time substituted for the pilot. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And the co-pilot, and the co-pilot took the pilot seat, and I took the co-pilot seat, and we flew the airplane on a mission. So, uh -huh. I mean, that's that was. But uh, we flew all over. It didn't hit Denver to see Dorothy. Never got near Denver. Is that right? Yeah. We, but boy, we trained a lot of a lot of people, a lot of flyers. Yeah. Uh, when did then, you ship out then? Huh? When did you ship out for overseas? What's he saying? When did you ship out for overseas? Oh, when did I ship out for overseas? You want to come into that now? Oh yeah, if you'd like, yeah. Okay, I can I can tell you when we shipped out for overseas. We didn't ship out until first we went to March Air Force Base in Marshfield, uh, California. That's in Riverside, California, and uh, uh, we we practiced missions there, going out over the Pacific Ocean, and uh, we we took and uh, they would take and uh, send fighter planes out. You know, after us, you know, we didn't have, we wouldn't shoot live ammunition at them or anything, but we could sight them in and things like that. But we, we, we did 
uh, we just practice flying the B-24s. Oh, so at this time you switch over the B-24. B-24s. And you said you like that much better than the 20, the 17? Right. Yeah. Uh, we, I like the B-24. Uh, the B-24 was a boxcar and, and the Japs hated it. They hadn't, they hadn't, we hadn't been over there with them yet. But uh, anyhow, let me tell you, we, we took and um, then we, we got noticed that we had won, the, we were the best crew on, on the March Air Force Base, we won for the best crew. Okay, so at this point now, you're, in, you're an actual crew, you've got your crew established? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, do the, you have a picture there of the first Yeah, we'll look at pictures after, afterwards. Yeah, we got a yeah. picture there. Anyhow, we were the best crew in March Air Force Base, and you go out to March Air Force Base right now today, and you'll see our pictures. Is yes, that right? Wow. Yeah, they're out, they're in out there. And uh, we we uh, uh, we took and uh, they they uh, they assigned us to go overseas. We didn't know where we was going. Yeah. You didn't know Pacific or Europe. We didn't know if we was going to Pacific or Europe or where. Okay. But let me tell you the story. What happened? We took and our crew was a good crew. We had a good pilot and a good co pilot. All of us were good. I hate to say it, yeah. but we were all good. Yeah. Obviously, and and, uh, we, and we all wanted to come home, too. That's what made the pilot was married and had a couple kids. Co-pilot was married, and the navigator was married. And here us, uh, in, us enlisted men, most of us were single, but we all wanted to come home. So uh, we ended up. They give us our shots and everything, and they give us our clothes. They give us uh, clothes for, for to go to. Go go to a cold country. Uh -oh. I mean, uh, yeah, that's how they uh, fix your uh, up. And so, anyhow, we 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 went to Hamilton Field in uh, California, and then the I think it's Fair Play. We went we went into Fair Play, and that's where we would take off to go overseas, right there. And we we was all prepared to go. We we loaded up, took off. And the pilot says, after we got in the airplane, he says, I'm the only one that knows where we're headed for. We're headed for New York. Huh. And, and, uh, and we're going to New York to the, uh, the base where they uh, fly out of, you know, we, and we're going to England. So that's what we did. We went, we went and got in and got back to New York. And when we, as soon as we got back there, there was a telegram from uh, out, uh, out here at Fair Play that they said, turn George Smucker's crew around and you're going to, you're going to go to the South Pacific. Huh. So we, we, we had to turn around, come back from New York, go to California. We picked up another airplane, another B-24, and uh, we we took a couple of days, and then we took off for Hawaii. Now, how long in those days would it take to get from, say, New York to California? Oh, it, we we it took uh, in that B twenty four. It took about four and a half, about five hours. Oh, okay. I mean, we didn't go straight through. We landed at uh, Chinook Field, Chicago, and would regas. You know, and then head out for California. Okay. But in California, you guys got a new plane, a different plane. So we got a B twenty four, another one. Okay. And we we uh, the reason they give you another one was because evidently for certain reasons of of uh, the other plane was fitted for South Pacific, and this one was fitted for England. Okay, you know, gotcha. The different yeah. right. altitudes okay. and things like that. Gotcha. And the, the different. Uh, uh, so we ended up and uh, went to Hawaii, stopped in Hawaii. Now, did you uh, guys fly over solo, or were you in a formation of planes, or how did no, you? just us. Just you? Oh, they don't. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're the we're the lone crew because we're going over there, and Schmucker's going to be the commander with for us over there. I mean, he'll be we'll be lead pilot. Oh, I'll be done. Okay. Because you know they knew we had a good yeah. crew, and yeah. they needed pilots down there, and they I mean they needed good. Uh, experts, and that, that's what 
they called us, they knew we were good. So we ended up in, uh, we went from Hawaii to Johnson Island, stayed there for about two hours and then regassed and took off and went to, we stopped at uh, uh, Guadalcanal, stopped at, 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 and they were still fighting in the bush a little bit, but it was practically all over. And then in Tarawa, we went into Tarawa and landed there. And from uh, Tarawa, we went into uh, to uh, uh, Biak, New, New Guinea. And when we got to Biak, New Guinea, we uh, we took and uh, uh, parked our car in the, in in the revetment, uh, and uh, uh, we it was kind of late in the evening, and the Japs had a habit of bombing at night, and and we 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 no sooner got there, and about an hour later, we hadn't even eaten. They they come in with their airplanes and uh, uh, strafed the, they strafed the strip and bombed, you know, so the bombers came over and oh, dropped geez. bombs and our airplane got destroyed. Oh, wow. Ah. <laughs> so that, that we, the next morning, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it was something we, 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 we had it taken, uh, uh, we had to wait about three weeks to get another airplane. It took quite a while to get another airplane. But uh, none of us got hurt or anything. We all went up into the rocks. and None of us got hurt or anything, so we were, we were safe. Were you scared, yeah. though, at all? Was, huh? it a scare, was it a scary experience, though, at all? Were you scared at all? or? Well, I, I, if, you, if I tell you I didn't get scared, I'd be lying, but... Uh, I was scared a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody on the crew. Uh, we were briefed before we'd fly a mission, and and then when we come back, we'd be briefed again, you know. And uh, all we had when we left to eat in the airplane was just not just they'd send a can of spam with us or something so we could eat some spam, and or they'd send us a can of turkey and, and things like that. That's we didn't, uh, but we had we had enough water to drink and things. They had a, we had a good uh, water and. Now was that base in New Guinea? Was that your home base then? No. Oh, okay. Uh, no, we we was in in we was on in Biak and. Um, so anyhow, we didn't go up to Morita. We They were going to send us to another. Uh, another place and we ended up uh, the airplane they said they'd have this airplane in in a couple of weeks and we got the airplane finally got an airplane in and uh, they, they told us we were going up to the island of Moratai and, and Moratai was the Marines were just taking it so we, we got the airplane and took off and went up to Moratai and had a dirt strip to land on. Wow. That's all. Wow. Just a dirt strip, you know. And the CBs had went in and made the strip uh, for, and they knew that we were coming with B-24s, and and uh, we we took off and uh, <clears throat> well, I didn't. We flew our first mission. I had a uh, we flew our first mission to. Uh, Oh, it was uh, Nielsen Field, the Philippines, and uh, all our missions were 14, uh, 13 or 14 hours long. Oh, geez. We'd, leak, we'd take off at, at, at 5 to 5, different times, 5 to 12 or 5 after 12. We just adjust, they were adjusted for us, you know, cause, so Japs couldn't sneak in there and pop shoot us and that. Yeah. But, uh, we uh, we took and went into to we was we when it was going in and when when uh, when uh, this was kind of funny, but one guy on our crew he was a waste gunner on the other side and I handled one waste gunner he he went he went cuckoo 
and and uh, I mean I mean it's hard to say, but uh, the, the you know the pilot he they go back and the pilot and co-pilot tells what happened and and uh, I had you know I was pretty tough. Everybody thinks that I'm a softy, but <laughs> I mean I played football, played basketball, sure, yeah. and and uh, anyhow the whole deal is. Uh, he 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 got pulled his 45. Uh, was gonna shoot, you know. The he he wanted us to sh get shot down, and and I took care of him quick. Wow. Ah. I mean, I was strong. So he he just cracked under the pressure. Is that what had happened? Yeah. yeah. See, the nose gunner was tied up in the nose gun. Uh -huh. The tail gunner was tied up in the tail gun. The Martin Terror was on top, and that was. Uh, that was tied up also um, by the Martin turret, and the ball turret was underneath. Yeah. Everybody was tied up, yeah. and I was the only one around to do anything. And boy, when I seen him pull that gun, he had a 45 too. I had a 45 yeah. right here. Right. And when I seen him pull that gun, oh boy, it scared me because he, one shot could have destroyed us. You know, this is where I got one of my medals. And and. Uh, I took and uh, I never even told my wife about this because they think you're bragging. I don't tell. I have never told John about yeah. this or Glenda. But uh, anyhow, uh, I took and, and and I had a watch because he was ready to pull a gun. I told him put it down. He wouldn't put it down. And and he says, "See that black out there? All that black? You can walk on it." That was Danny aircraft from the. The Jets. flak. Oh boy. And it was bad. It, it was so bad. this was going on while you guys were in the middle of a, a flak attack? and Well, there was no zeros because, see, when you go over the target, the zeros don't go into the target. Just us, airplanes, would go into the target. And, and, and uh, so he, when, the next time he looked out the window, and I, I, I grabbed him and I wrestled the gun away from him. And, and 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 boy, I slammed him down on the on the, on the uh, fuselage floor, and I didn't know what to do with him. I had a, you know, we were we were only let's see, we were see, at, high, at an altitude where we had to have oxygen. Because the and planes weren't pressurized. The B twenty four wasn't a pressurized plane. No, right. The windows were open. Yeah, waste yeah. windows yeah. were open. You know, so anyhow. Make a long story short, sure, I'll tell you. Uh, I, I, I told Smucker on intercom, you know, uh, that I had had to fight him. I tied him up with his with his oxygen uh, strings and that. And boy, he he was mad, but I I, I slapped him around. Yeah. And I and, and took his gun and I just threw it out the window. That's I just. Tossed it out the window. I wasn't going to leave it in there for him. Right. But uh, anyhow, uh, I tied him up. And he was tied up all the way home to our base, back to Mortai. And when they got to Mortai, the MPs come and they took him off. He never flew again. Hmm. He was gone. Wow. He was a Spanish boy. Hmm. But he was a good boy. Yeah. He was good. Just, just broke down, huh? He, he, he took and went off the beam. Just, you know. But and anyhow, they called me in for interrogation and everything and and told me I did a good job because he would have, if he would have shot in the airplane, he might have blown us up. Yeah, right, right. Because he could have hit a, you know, gas or something like that. So that ended that. And they awarded you the air medal for that? Huh? You got the air medal for that? I got I got I I got the uh, air medal with the uh, oak leaf cluster. I think that's what I got. Yeah. 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 Got that. Before I forget to ask you, how many missions altogether did you fly? Forty nine. Forty nine missions. Yeah. I I flew thirty five missions, and they won, wanted me to go home. The uh, the flight surgeon told me I could go home. And. And I told him, no, I'm going to fly a few more missions. I mean, I was, 
I, I was, I just thought I'd stay, we had to get even with the Japs, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. and, I, and I stayed, and, and that's when, after that, we sunk a Japanese destroyer. Now, after your 35 missions, I mean, did the rest of your crew sign on for more missions, or did you switch to a different crew, or? Two or three of them went home, but in, in the pilot, he went home. On, on 35, and um, yeah, there were several of us that stayed. Uh, the tail gunner, he stayed, and, and uh, the ball turret gunner, he's another one that I helped get out and saved his life. Hmm. And so that's, that was, he, his wife, she's, she's, I don't know if she's still living now or not, but she wrote us, at Christmas and told us he had died. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and uh, that, that she was going to send me some, some of her pictures after, you know, if, if, if uh, I never have gotten any more off her. But she, she, was, she sent us a Christmas card several times later asking me questions, you know. Yeah, and yeah. And during, I answered it back to her. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he told his wife that I, I brought him out of the ball turret one time, and and he uh, he was stuck underneath there and couldn't get it to the automatic system wouldn't work, and and I I cranked them out. Hmm. They had a crank, you know, and it took about took about ten minutes to crank them out, but I finally got them out. But hmm. that ended up with that guy. And, Tell us a little bit about what what were conditions like at, at your air base there. They, it sounded like it was a primitive runway. Was the was the base pretty primitive as far as your your housing and food and and such? Yeah, the 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 uh, the food we had we had we had uh, food, but different types of food. We eat out of the our uh, just go down with our cups and things like that and take them along and. And uh, we 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 had to have all kinds of they they had, I don't know uh, we had a lot everything was canned we didn't have no eggs or anything like that no no fun food food wasn't uh, bad at all we we had a, we put up with it yeah we we had to you know how was your housing what was the housing like the, the what your housing uh, oh I'm sorry yeah we we had uh, uh, tents. We we uh, had tents. We set them up ourselves, wow. and and uh, there was uh, us listed men. Uh, we had a pretty big tent because all six of us stayed together, you know, so that we could talk together uh -huh, and uh -huh. play poker if we had to and uh -huh, things like uh -huh. that. They had but a monkey. We, this more tight. I mean, we were we were uh, bombed night and day. We Is that bombed. right? Every day, every morning we got they dropped a bomb on us, and every night they'd come back and drop another bomb before they go to bed. The Japs just to harass you. Yeah. 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 Wow. They they just well, they hit pretty close sometimes, but never did actually. Uh, one of the, one of the ACAC guns that was close to us got hit, wiped them out. You know the 135 mil. Uh, and the aircraft machine. Well, well, how would how would that be for you then? I mean, if they were harassing you at night and day. Were you able to get enough sleep? I mean, always. I, I to me, I think I'd be laying in my cot, wondering when that, worrying about that plane coming over and not being able to sleep. But, well, we didn't fly every day, you know. Yeah. I mean, we, we flew about every fourth day, maybe every, sometimes maybe fifth day or sixth. But when when they get a good mission lined up then we'd we'd fly but uh we did uh, it uh, the bombing that more tie was bombed more the heaviest bomb bombardment of an island in the south pacific is that right that's it's of record wow it's wow. of record wow. yeah it sure is and it but, sounded like you had a, a pet in your tent you guys had a mascot you want to talk about that yeah we we had a uh, we had a pretty, pretty good mascot. I mean, the monkey. The monkey, Dad? Huh? How about the monkey? 
Yeah, that's what I said. We had a monkey, and <laughs> it, it, that monkey was pretty smart. We even took him on a mission once. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A really good one that you should tell him about is when, huh? you, got, when you got shot down uh, yeah. and you had to cross uh, with the Korean, was it the Korean man that took you through? You and some buddies? And yeah. We, and saved him. That was on our mission. One of our missions to fill things. And is that when you were taught how to descend de de uh, de the skunks? The what? Descent the skunks. Descent the skunks. Descent the skunk. Is that when you were taught were taught how to descent a skunk? Oh, I haven't come across that yet. Okay. Yeah. We'll get that when I yeah we'll, we'll, when, we'll, when I get out of college. Yeah. Oh. We'll, uh, well, let's go back to this yeah, monkey. You had to tell him how you learned that. Huh? You have to tell him how you learned that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you about. I'll tell you real quick about. We, we got shot up over. Uh, we went in on. John Rogers Field. That's outside of Manila. And we went in there to. To. Uh, make a bomb and then come back and turn around and come in on Cavite. Uh, it's on the other side of Manila. We'd circle back and come in at a low altitude, about 2,500 feet or less, and we we would save a couple bombs for that, and drop them on Cavite because we might luckily, you know, hit some ships or something. But uh, we got shot up. We was up in the air and we got hit with anti-aircraft, and and we got shot up real bad. Uh, luckily, nobody got killed. And a couple of the other guys got hit, but they, we, we took and um, real, real quick, the we tried to save the gasoline from leaking out, but we couldn't. It was leaking, so we, we uh, stood ahead and for home, which was another six and a half, seven hours. We headed for Mindanao. That was the the where. The Japs owned it, they had it, they, but we were headed for there because we had a better chance of escaping. So uh, this was on this was on another another uh, uh, let me think how we, we we headed for Mindanao, we got over Mindanao and uh, for us four uh, Schmucker told the, the navigator it wasn't Schmucker, I'm sorry. It was it was uh, his substitute. And and uh, Schma uh, Sharp was there, but uh, anyhow, he uh, the pilot told us to bail out. Wow. Over, he said we're gonna we're we're flying over Cabada, Carlo Car Carlo Bada. Carlo Obata is what it was. And he says, four of you go now and the rest of us will jump later. When, and so we, we did, we, we jumped out, four of us. The, the co the, see the navigator went, Hazleton, and I went, and uh, uh, Scoggins and the tail went, and uh, I can't think of the, the uh, the other was Crane. He let he went, and uh, we just bailed out. We we. What were you What were you thinking when you jumped out of the plane? It was still daylight, you know. I mean, it wasn't dark yet because see, we we always we bombed early and got in uh, uh, early in the morning around six thirty, and so it took us a couple hour, hour and a half, I guess, to get down a minute now, or maybe two hours and. And uh, we bailed out, and, and uh, we, we we took and uh, who's out there? You got somebody out there? No, I'm just looking. So anyhow, cause I thought maybe you wanted to see somebody. But anyhow, make go, real quick. Uh, took us 30 days to get back to the. We had a Filipino gorilla, gorilla. Uh, we. We bumped into one and picked them up. Wow. 
luckily, you know, and the four of us weren't together. It took us, it took us a couple of days to get them all, all four of us together. Wow. But he finally got all of us together, and uh, it took us four days. When after we got together, he started taking us, in uh, the night we'd go at night. It took us thirty days to get down to the, to the tip of Mindanao, and when we got down there, the navigator, he had he had a little little he could contact a submarine you know or he could contact an airplane or but what what he did he couldn't contact ba the base our home couldn't wouldn't go that far no oh, jeez so anyhow uh, we, we was on we was down there pretty close to the to the uh, uh, this is in the uh, ocean and uh, we uh, it ended up where all we did was let the, the uh, Filipino boy tell us when to go and when not to go, and what to do. You know, we we come on, uh, across some Jap patrols. Oh, yeah. Must have been terrifying. We couldn't kill them. Yeah, yeah. Because if we did, they know where we right, were right. close. So for that period of time, then you were listed as missing in action. I assumed at your back at your base. Yeah. But right there, we were missing in action. So, we we got in. We we got down there, and uh, our navigator contacted. He contacted uh, oh, a submarine. and told us that we needed to be rescued. And uh, I don't know what they did, but uh, he he uh, he said get a get a PB wife. To come in to pick us up, uh -huh. they had PBY rescue planes, right. and and uh, so anyhow we we boy we waited and waited and waited and then uh, finally uh, uh, the submarine called us back and told the navigator to to watch out that they were going to come in and pick us up. The submarine was? Yeah. Oh, no, what? no, no. Oh, the no, PBY? The PBY. Oh, okay. And so we had we waited, and boy, here, about three days later, we'd watch every morning. They told us to watch every morning. And and uh, they uh, they knew exactly where we were. We can, uh, you know, told them, they, navigator told them exactly where we were. Now, did, did the navigator jump with a uh, radio, or how was he... Uh, he had one with him. Okay. okay. He kept it for in case okay. he needed it. And what was what was life like for those thirty days? I mean, how did you? What did you eat? How did you? Where did you sleep? Uh, it must have been pretty rough conditions. Well, we 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 eat with we had our what little kit with stuff in it, you know, on our side. Yeah, but surely you didn't have thirty days worth of supplies. No, no we didn't. But we 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 ate, we took and uh, the. Uh, the uh, uh, the little little Phil, the Filipino gorilla would get us any kind of food. You know, we didn't get real food. We eat berries or eat eat uh, mostly pineapples and stuff like that. Did you ever have any problems with any of the uh, you know jungle diseases that are in there? Did you ever come down with any any problems in that? Regard? I came down with malaria. Yeah. I mean, and so did one of the other fellows, Crane. He came down with malaria too. And and uh, but uh, it was it was uh, we had to be real careful. We I'll tell you, I mean the Japs owned the isle. They had yeah. they had it. Well, they were connected to the Philippines, you know, Mindanao. Uh, first it was Mindador, Mindor, and then Mindanao, and we wanted to get down to the tip of, of the ocean where we could get picked up. And that's where, how we got picked up. Wow. And uh, the other, the whole deal was they they came in, the PBY came in once and then he had to take off and go because something scared him. I don't, I don't know, but the next morning he came back again and boy, he landed pretty as close as he could and we all, Got up and went out and jumped out and.
took off. And Japs didn't see us. It was early in the morning. Wow. Right Boy, at, that must have been a relief to be rescued. Yeah, right at daybreak. And, oh. and we got in the PBY and they took us to, first they took us to New Guinea and then to Australia. Hmm. That's, we got an airplane to Australia. Now what happened with the rest of your crew? The, the, the rest of the crew, they took off and how in the hell they got rescued, I don't know. Huh. I mean, they, they told us they, they, uh, they got rescued, but uh, I mean by uh, a boat, what, if it was, uh, I don't know what kind of a boat it was, you know, or anything. And we were too excited to, to get back to the base. You I know. bet. What, do you remember what mission that was that you went down on? Yeah, it was my 32nd. Wow. It was my 32nd mission. Just three short of going home, but that's what what the flight surgeon told us that we had had enough. You know, yeah, we could go home, and and that didn't convince you that you wanted to go home. You still wanted to stay on, huh? Yeah, I stayed on through fourteen more missions, <laughs> oh, but forty nine. But uh, no, so that ended that, and then the, the one more deal, and that's that's it. We we took and and. When you when you get out there and you have the you have you we all of us were strong. Uh, had a different pilot on this mission. We went on a shipping strike, uh, and uh, they, they all the ships. This was in May of '45. All the ships the Japs were taking and going to the Philippines with their Aircraft carriers, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everything. So uh, finally, the, this aircraft carrier was out there. He had cruisers, several about three cruisers around it, and had four or two, four or more destroyers mm -hmm. around. They were all going up to to the Philippines, right? And and we we took and uh, and went in. Uh, Flying at uh, 6,500 feet above him, and we picked his destroyer out, and we flew in, and 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 we actually dropped. They said the, uh, the I seen five bombs hit it, but the the briefing outfit come up and said all nine bombs our nine bombs hit it. Is that right? Yeah, but. But we hit the destroyer. It sunk within a minute, and a, more a minute and a half. It was gone. Wow. There was a one. A, a, there was a sugar Charlie right up from them, and uh, we we took and uh, we made a pass on it and shot it up and damaged it pretty heavy. So I don't know if it sunk or what. But we got the destroyer. We got credit mm -hmm. for it, and we got a. Citation from the, the even the, the, the uh, I've got the this is it right mm -hmm. here, yeah, right there. Now, you uh, you guys were always the lead bomber when you'd go out, yeah. And how many normally when you go out on a mission, how many would what would your formation be when we went on that flight on that uh, shipping strike? We were started with 12 airplanes and ended up with uh, eight. Four, four turn around and board. back. Uh -huh. They they couldn't go for yeah. any further. And uh, but we don't we didn't bomb together. We we had to go after them ourselves. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. We we you couldn't you you know we didn't bomb as a uh, heavy target. Now that aircraft carrier is right in the middle, you know, and the, the zeros had taken off. We had zeros up there, you know. Oh, geez. I, I shot down three zeros. Is that right? Wow. See, see these medals? Uh huh. Well, we'll, every, we'll go over those after after the interview. Every Matt. time I shot uh, a zero down, I got a medal. So you were credited with three kills then, or did you? Huh? All, all together, you were credited for uh, three, or did you have more in in other uh, missions? I didn't get. I didn't shoot a zero down that day. Oh, okay. They were on other missions. But all together, all your missions, you were credited with three kills? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. See, a zero can't fly in. At, at, uh, we can go in there 
uh, low and drop down lower, which we did. After we hit that destroyer, we dropped down to about 100 feet above the water and, and uh, strafed that Sugar Charlie and then took off for home. That was, uh, that's so what basically, when you guys were going on a mission, you weren't doing high level bombing, you were more low level bombing then, is that correct? On, on a shipping strike. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't do nothing high. I mean, yeah. We, you couldn't make it. But when would you when you do would you would do land targets? Would you be more high level bombing or would, yeah? Okay, right. okay. Right. Yeah, we we could go up to twenty one thousand yeah. feet if we had to. Okay. We de generally didn't though. We generally bombed at about seventeen thousand, eighteen thousand. What, what what was conditions like in the airplane uh, as far as uh, you know, particularly on the long mission, you know, the fourteen hour missions? Yeah. What was it? What were conditions like as far as did you have to wear? Uh, uh, Clothing to to, oh, yeah. to keep yeah. away from the cold and yeah, we had a heated suit. Okay. On our long missions. Okay. We had heated suit. We had uh, uh, relief tubes where we could take a pee, mm -hmm. and if we had to, you know, and that's all. You couldn't go to the restroom because there's yeah. just no room, and and uh, but the uh, conditions were they they they. Uh, they were good. I mean, uh, we had oxygen available to us. You know, we put them on at sixteen thousand feet. We put our oxygen mask on all the time. Never failed. Mm. If it failed, you pass yeah. out. Yeah, right, right, right. And we'd go up to seventeen thousand or eighteen thousand feet. That'd be about it. But that's 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 about where we're at. Yeah. Where are we at now? Well, let me ask you, how about, you know, how was it as far as communications between you and Dorothy as far as getting mail back and forth? Was that pretty reliable? And, and, and how did, what did those letters mean to you to get, get letters from Dorothy? And Yeah, well, she didn't, she wrote me quite, quite a few times, you know, and told me she was praying for me. Wow, that must have been. And, a... and, and she was real good. I mean, and she wanted me to come home. Yeah, yeah. And I told her I didn't know if I was coming home or not. To yeah. the truth. Oh boy! I wrote back and I just told her I didn't tell her the bad things that were going yeah. on. Did but Did she know that you'd been shot down? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. She She knew something was wrong because she didn't hear from so me. There's a gap. That. Yeah. About thirty days, and I, I always wrote her, uh, wrote a letter to her, and, and things like that, you know. But uh, I I don't know. I mean. Yeah. Our our crew had it rough, but we could handle it. Wow. Do you, do you think that's? I mean, you, you look at uh, that time period. I mean, any any one of those things. I mean, you, you weren't living in the best conditions, and probably weren't eating right, weren't weren't sleeping right, and then you had the stress of war on on top of all of that. Do you think just because you guys were so fit that that's the way you, that's how you made it through through that, or how do you yeah. credit that? I mean, it was a rough period. How do you think you made it through that period? It, it made it made us all. We were all set. We all wanted to to do our job against the Japs. I mean, we, we hated to all of us. We were taught between you and I. I don't know how far you take yeah. this, but before we went overseas, it says it's either you or them. They'll get you, or you better get them. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that was emphasized to us, and that's yeah. what we lived on. It's either. When I got my zeros, and I can tell you real quick about how I got my zeros, yeah, get yeah. it over with. Uh, uh, I I took and uh, we flew a mission on on Barneo, uh, Barneo, and it was on their Japanese oil installations, and and a, and a zero was sitting out there, you know, and and I, I waved him in. I just went like that, <laughs> and, and and he he was I don't know what he was planning on doing, but. So anyhow, finally, finally, he peeled off on a pass and made a pass on us, but he didn't make it on us, me. He went underneath, see, and the ball turret gunner tried to get him, but he missed him. So the ball turret gunner said, that guy will be back. So you waste gunners watch, because he's going to come back. And I, I guess he did, because he... He turned around and went out and and was horsing around out there and I I just had my sights on him. 
I just, I mean, I was really ready for him. And when, when he, when he took and and he came in, you know, he he was he was coming right at us. It was either me, I blew him out of the sky, or he would have got us. Right, right. And and uh, and I I just I just waited, and and I was trained at gunnery school, and 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 they told us when. They get so many feet, you gotta get them or you, you'll miss them. And boy, I tell you what, I, I unloaded my 50 caliber machine gun on him and I blew him right out of the sky. Wow. He, he, he got hit, you know, and he went down. Huh. But that was him, that was one. Okay, and the second one was, was easy. I, I got uh, hit. Uh, we we were flying in the in, in the uh, over Corregidor, and uh, we was on our first road. It was the first raid back on Corregidor, by the way. Wow! And I picked one off up there, and and uh, and then uh, over in uh, what you call over in Cebu. Cebu, we were flying over and going to bomb Cebu because they were planning on invading Cebu. And I, and I took, and uh, he made a mistake. He uh, come from down below up, you know, and, and, and the ball turk gunner missed him. But I just picked him, when he comes straight, straight up like on a slant, I just poured it to him. Uh -huh. and, I, and I got him. Uh -huh. I got three. Wow. Oh. But we, we weren't paid to get them. We were paid to hit them, get them out. Of, yeah, right, right, right. Get them all out of the war. So after your 49th mission, then, uh, the, the, what stopped you from there? Did did you did the war end, or were you were you ready to go home at that point, or what happened after your 49th? On my 40, when I flew my 49th mission, I went in. And the next morning, the flight surgeon comes to see me. And he says, George, <clears throat> you better go home. And I told him, I said, I was planning on coming to you, and I, I'm going to go home. And so anyhow, he said, well, come down and uh, bring, bring your, uh, bring your uh, gear along, you know. And I just didn't have much gear. I just had stuff. That I, you know, I went down, and he gave me one paper, and he said, this is where you go. This is the paper will take you home. And it was signed by... Uh, the right guy, you know, and everything. And I forget who signed it, Thomas. I think it was Thomas. I'm not sure. Now, why, uh, why the 49th mission? What, what particularly? What made you decide at that time? Okay, I, I, I finally have had enough. Well, I, I just didn't think I might not reach 50. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was done. Yeah. When on the way back, I got to thinking. I, I, um, I, this is my 49th. Uh, I think I'm going home. I'll be darned. Wow. I said, uh, Dorothy's waiting yeah. at home for me. I'm safe and I'm going to go home. Let, let me ask you, when you started talking about it, you're thinking about things. Uh, can, you, can you kind of tell us what it's like uh, as you, I don't know if every mission was the same, I'm sure they're all different, but you know, there's really, I see three parts of the mission, you know, preparing and flying to the mission, the actual mission, and then after the mission's done and you're flying home, how did like let's start with the first part. How would you prepare for a mission, and what were your thoughts going as you were flying in? What would be harm's way and, and the unknown? What what would you go through your mind, particularly when you're sitting in a plane for five or six hours on the way? I mean, what what are you thinking? Well, it, it, most of the time we went to the Philippines, uh, it took us uh, about seven hours to get there, six and a half to for, to get there by the say mm -hmm. six thirty in yeah. the morning. Yeah. By don't, uh, as soon as the sun was coming up, we we bombed because, and then then uh, uh, before we went on a mission, we were briefed. You know that we had a heavy briefing. We we they take us in and brief us. Mm -hmm. The all the crews, you know, mm -hmm. like we didn't go. Most of the time, we took twelve airplanes, eighteen planes. Most of the time, 18 planes. Once we took 24 airplanes over to to uh, Borneo, 
Well, that must, must have been a sight to see all those planes up like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd fly in formation, and we flew tight formations. But when, when you know, we'd hit, we would hit bad weather a lot. But we loved it hmm. to get in where the zeros couldn't see us. Now, oh, right, okay. And they yeah. didn't dare go in the, to the clouds because they knew we were in there, yeah. you know. Yeah. But Japs had a lot of airplanes. But when, when, like you say, when we were on the way home, you, you'd think, did we do a good job, or, you know, was they going to be satisfied with what we bombed? But we had, a lot of times we had a photographer on the airplane would take pictures, and uh, generally speaking, our bombardier was good. Yeah, and we we would hit. Well, we, what would, what about like for example, after a mission, you got home and. So, oh, say, got a meal or something, and that night laying in, in your cot when you kind of had a time to just really decompress, did you did you think back about that mission, or did you just try to put it out of your mind? And I mean, when you had, I imagine during the mission, you're, you've got so much adrenaline going, you really just you're so busy. But yeah. the free time when you've got time to think, did 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 it ever get to you at all? Or oh yeah, I mean, a lot. Of, I I never it never really it really never bothered me much. I. I wanted to fly 35 missions and go home. Yeah. And then when I got to 35, I was ready to fly more. Huh. But they needed they needed they needed airplanes and yeah. our and we we uh, uh, they needed the engineers. They were short on engineers. Right. See, we had another engineer on our airplane too. I mean, he was Wheeler we was in on our real crew as a first engineer, and I was assistant. Oh, okay. And then I finally got to where I was flying my, as a, my own engineer when I got in, but with different crews. Okay. I wouldn't fly with the same crew all the time. Oh, okay. I was shoved into other because I was substituting the engineer, see? Okay. And, and we would do that. They, you know, they, they had, uh, the Catholics had churches come around and, and see us before we go on a mission, you know, which is good luck. And we we come home a lot of times without planes. No, that must have been yeah. tough. Yeah, I mean we get back to the base and the, you know the mechanics that take care of your airplane would be looking for us. Wow. And no. and they they would go wild when we wouldn't return. Oh boy. When we didn't return on that one mission, it it, it just absolutely tore them apart. You know. Hmm. And and. Uh, but uh, they, they, the crew that didn't come back, they told us they ditched their airplane in the ocean down further. And, and uh, the, I guess they, they had better luck than us because they picked a boat up that got, took them mm. right away. Mm. I mean, they got back. They were going in. So that was about it. Where were yeah. we at now? Yeah, well, let's start. Let's uh, continue your story. You, you finished your 49th mission. You got your paper to go home. Take your story from there, then. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, let's see. Uh, when I when I got home, uh, I first when I land, land uh, when I when I got back to the states, I came back on a Canadian destroyer. Oh, is that so right? They, the flight surgeon told me to find my own way. I came back on a Canadian destroyer. And, and I, they stopped up in the San Francisco about 40 miles out in international waters, and, and I, they picked me up. Well, now how was that? Here's a here's a boy from Western Pennsylvania uh, on a on the ocean. Did you get your sea legs, or how was that trip back for you? Oh, it was good. No, yeah. no seasickness or anything like that. Mm -hmm. No. No, I mean I I was I I wasn't feeling good. I mean it bothered me, but I. In the airplane, I never got sick, but on the boat, I didn't throw up or anything. Yeah, okay. I was just, but. So you're back in, the, you get back to San Francisco? Yeah. No, no they, they they had a, a, a boat come out and pick me up. Oh, okay. And take me in, uh, and they took me in, and then the airplane, the fair play came and picked me up in, in on, on where I landed in the boat. They picked me up, and then I, that was it. That must have been a great feeling to be back, uh, yeah. back in the states. The only thing is, I, they took my gun from me. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah, I had a 45 still. And when I when I got in there, they took they took my B4 bag, and I went back to get it, and it was gone. And I I I had a few a few things I wanted to bring back. Yeah, you know, yeah. And that was it. How about uh, back? You know, now you're back in the states, and uh, you had mentioned. Uh, you know, through the times growing up, uh, uh, kicking field goals for milkshakes, and you and Dorothy going out for milkshakes. Was that, I know a lot of the guys that were overseas would come back and they'd have cravings for, was milkshakes one of your cravings that you hadn't had for a while, or was that? Uh... Well, as soon as we got back, and uh, they, I, I was a fair play, they, they had good food and everything. And, and boy, I really appreciated it, you know, because over there we had skimp. Yeah, right, and, right. We were, were pretty bad. So, but, so. Uh, anyhow, from going quick, I get over this quick. Uh, from Fair Play, they, they, uh, they, I didn't come come to Fort Collins right then uh, to see Dorothy. I went back to where they said I had a report to Goldsboro, North Carolina, and I got down there, and they, they, they took and. Uh, checked me over and everything, and they didn't discharge me right then. Uh, I, had, I had to wait a while, but because um, October uh, 6 was going to be my discharge date, they said. So anyhow, uh, what I did is uh, I went back up, I went, went from Goldsboro, got a, got a ride into Pittsburgh on an airplane, I got to Pittsburgh and went in to see my uncle and aunt and everybody, and and uh, but I told them I'm only here for one day. I'm leaving. I'm going mm -hmm. west. Mm -hmm. I said I'm going out to to see Dorothy, and that's what I did. I stayed a day, and I didn't see everybody I wanted to see, but uh, I took off and went to uh, the uh, Pittsburgh airport and. Um, Allegheny County Airport I went to, and and there was a there was a, a Navy pilot in there going to Chicago, Chinook Field, and I he gave me a ride to Chinook Field in the airplane, and I got to Chinook Field. I went in and checked again, and I got another ride from from Chicago to the air base up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. There's, there's an air base in Warren. Cheyenne, Warren. Yeah. And and uh, I, I lucked out. Yeah. And and uh, and so uh, I, then when I got up in Wyoming, well, I had called Dorothy and told her I was on my way. And and then uh, when I got to, uh, I got a went down and got a bus. I told him I wanted to go in on a bus to 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 Fort Collins, and and uh, I got on the bus and come in and and it was. But in the afternoon, I, I, I come in, and Dorothy and her brother was there and met, and met me at the at the bus. Oh station. boy! Well, well, that must have been a wonderful homecoming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she was happy. Oh wow! She's changed a lot since then, but she was happy. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I hugged her, and she kissed me, and I hugged her and kissed her, and and. and uh, we went, uh, Orion took us, that's her brother, took us out to where her mother, mother had a home there. And we went out to her mother's home and, and, uh, and, and I stayed, I stayed there. She gave me my room for myself and, and, uh, and, uh, and that was about August, uh, oh, let's see. I was, I think it was around the 9th or 10th of August we got there, and then, uh, uh, so we, we, we seen each other a lot and everything, wanted to make sure we was going to get married, I guess, and we, they said her sister was there, and she, she said September 1st for it, so September 1st we got married. A 45? Huh? Oh, September 1st, 45? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and we got married in the Baptist church, and uh, had a nice wedding, real nice wedding, and everything. And we stayed, we 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 stayed in uh, uh, Fort Collins. 
her and I got, they, we had gotten a room up at the Armstrong Hotel. Okay. And they sabotaged our room. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce and him. So that's about that there. I mean, they, they put crumbs in our bed and everything. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. And so then that was it. And, and then her brother, and we, they, he took us up to the, the ranch so we could, I could see the ranch and her mother and dad went up and, and uh, got prepared for the wedding and everything. And we were happy and we, we got it done. I mean, she was a she was a beautiful girl. There she is, right there. Uh, we'll get that on the on the that's, tape, yeah. That's that's the one I had when she sent me overseas. Wow. And the reason it's all blotted up like that is, I had that in my real estate office, and I I my real estate. I I was in real estate. Not right away. Uh, I went to school right away from 1946, let's see, 1946 I started, in 1949 I graduated. Uh, up here at CSU? At CSU, yeah, at Colorado Ags then. Right. I graduated, and then from there, I went to Cortez, Colorado and taught school. At, I was in the junior high school for the first year. As a coach. And in the high school for two other years. I was I taught three years, and uh, those three summers I went back. I went back to Indiana and and and, to, and was getting my masters, and and uh, I uh, I ended up with a good friend back there, and I don't know if you ever heard of him or not, but Sid Gilman. He was he was, uh, and um, uh, so anyhow. Uh, Conoco was there and I put my name application in right there because uh, my third year I knew I wasn't going to finish it. I'd go next year, another fourth, because I wasn't making enough money. Right, right. And, and Conoco knew I came back there to go to summer school, you know, and I was taking oil and gas. And I, uh, I took and uh, uh, I finished it and and uh, the uh, the whole deal was I come back, and when I got back, uh, we we, had, we was living in an apartment there. I forget the, where it was, but anyway, um, I got a call from Conoco, and they said they want, wanted me wanted to know if I wanted to go work for them. And this guy was at Indiana, so he's talking mm -hmm. to recruits mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I said I did so he right away I got a job and I got a good job and it paid real well and if you don't believe me I was I was I, I worked from I started out just as a surveyor and I went into the office and I was uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, computers in the office and I went worked in the office long and pretty soon they they put me on as assistant party chief and from assistant party chief I went into uh, I, I took they wanted somebody to manage the field crew we had a, uh, a uh, crew out in the desert and and I took it and um, let me think here a minute the um, that's where I took you, Landa, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I took Landa down with me to the desert, and and <laughs> she, she, we had a big crew, and we had cooks and everything. Wow. And the food was pretty good, wasn't it, sis? Mm -hmm. She went down with that, and she liked to go with that. <laughs> and I take her, and and uh, and we, uh, uh, I ran the crew. So how many years were you with Conoco then? Seven. Seven? Yeah. Yeah, sure was. And I'd still been with them if they hadn't said they were going to ship me to Canada. In fact, they got me as far as, oh boy, as far as Bags, Wyoming. When I got to Bags, Wyoming, 
I, I knew I wanted to quit, but I didn't want to go to Canada. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was it. And uh, I, I, I could have got a raise and everything. And, and we moved from, from Cortez, and I, I moved the crew all the way up uh, as far as I could to the Montana uh, boundary line mm -hmm. and, and uh, everything. We had, oh, we had trailers and uh, everything. So anyhow, the whole deal is we, uh, I stayed with Conoco that long. And when I, when I quit, I was looking for a job and uh, we built a house, Dorothy and us built a house. That's why I didn't want to quit too. We had a home in Cortez. We built it, a real nice home mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And and we, uh, Dorothy worked hard at the house. She helped clean the place up out in the fields and everything. Lana was just a baby girl. And uh, we, we, we took and uh, uh, lived there and we had, uh, I got, uh, I got a hobby, and and uh, it was when I was in college at CSU, I went to to the vet school. I took a lot of their courses, and the the, the Chinese guy taught me how to operate on skunks through the anus. Oh, <laughs> and and he said nobody, no vets want to do that. They want to take them out the side. George, you take him out the anus. I'll show you how, and you can do it. Now, where he went, I don't know where he went, but he was a good Chinese guy. I guess he went back to China. But uh, anyhow, I went, and uh, Dorothy and I, we put it, I took a job at the radio station, and uh, uh, I was sales and commercial manager at the radio station. It was a brand new radio station, and Hawkins hired me, and and I did real good there, and uh, he liked me real well, and and uh, and Landon knows that my operation was pretty good, wasn't it, sis? Dad operated on skunks, and we probably did around 200, uh, 200 yeah. in spring or summer. Let me and tell that's you. how we made our, our extra money <laughs> oh, okay. for vacations and stuff like that. And, uh, but it was an unusual way of operating on stuff. Yeah. The Chinese man taught him. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd advertise on the radio and they'd bring skunks to us. <laughs> Baby skunks. 50 cents a piece. <laughs> How much? Did, we paid 50 cents a piece. <laughs> 50 yeah. cents. And, and just to say, it's a lot of them, most of them give them to us. They didn't want paid. They just want to give them to us. But anyhow, like she said, we'd operate on skunks, and boy, we had a lot of skunks, didn't we, sis? <laughs> and, and Dorothy and Landa was my nurses, <laughs> and I was the operator. <laughs> and I operated on them, and, and Landa, she got sprayed several times. Oh, boy. Yeah. But we always come out, didn't we, sis? Yeah. yeah. She'd like me to do another one for her. <laughs> but we, we'd sell them, we shipped them to California and New Mexico, and... Huh. And uh, back east, everywhere, we shipped them all over. Uh -huh. Made made good money yeah. on it, because uh, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, uh, so anyhow, that that didn't last forever, because we had a, we we uh, ended up. Uh, you went I to work for Marshak, didn't you? Huh? You went to work for Marshak equipment. So yeah, but I, I, that was just a few few months, Linda. That was not a major job. That kind of got you up here, though, to Loveland, I think, or Fort Collins. Yeah, well, that's when we moved. We sold our home in Cortez and turned around and moved to Fort Collins. And John, he was a little toker. He was born down Cortez. And, and that's my boy. Yeah. He, he, he was born in Cortez. And then, so then you got into real estate when you got up here? Yeah, and Rand, Landa, she, she went to uh, school at Lakeview and graduated at a small country school at, at Lakeview, right, sis? Mm -hmm. Then when we come up here, she went to high school at Loveland High School here. And John, he, 
he took and went to Loveland High School too when he got old enough. And uh, we've had a we've had a good good go. Yeah. And how long were you in real estate? Uh, Twenty three years. Wow. I I took it nineteen sixty two. And quitting eighty five is that how many years is that? Yeah, twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I I stuck with mostly farms, ranches, and and businesses. And you helped me run the dry cleaners down in Loveland too. Huh? We had carriage cleaners in in Loveland. Yeah. And had that for seven years, and he was there with me. Yeah, that landed them. We we first we took a restaurant, sis. Yeah, I was gone during that time. Yeah, I found a restaurant and and Landon Dorothy helped clean it up and everything. I was with another partner, and I and Dorothy didn't like it, and I don't think Landon liked it, and anyhow ended up uh, ended up and I got out of it. He bought me out, which I liked, and and I we took that money and went into to carriage cleaners. We bought. We bought and named it Carriage Cleaners, and uh, and was in the land that she she was the operator on it, and, and handled it mostly all the time. And Mom helped, and John was the he was the engineer on it, and he he helped with all the maintenance of the fixing the machinery and that. <laughs> and and uh, he did a good job. He saved me money because he knew what he was doing, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, so. We we come out of that, but I was still selling real estate. See, okay, I didn't quit selling yeah. real estate, but in in uh, 1985 I, I I I I quit. I had a, I got out of it. Yeah, yeah. I was out. I just yeah. got out. Yeah. But I mean, I can still know my real estate, and uh, that's about it. Yeah. Well, well, we'll start to wind down this interview. Uh, is there anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about? Anything that you guys can think of that he didn't bring up that you wanted to talk about before we, uh, so make sure we hopefully cap, capture most of it anyhow? Yeah, okay. Well, uh, John, he's been in the, I was, I worked at a machine shop for quite a while. He, he, he was working at, at, uh, at uh, Berth, let's see, Loveland Machine Shop down in Bertha, Colorado, and, and he got me a job down there, and I went, uh, I went down there, I and, yeah, did that just to keep and worked. Busy, I think. Yeah, that's after you retired, just to yeah. keep busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get out of the house and stuff. Huh? You did that just to kind of get out of the house. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then, then uh, he he went on his own, and put his own shop in, and he's downtown, right there. Were you know was uh, was pretty nice where he was at. He had, a, but the rent was real sky high and everything, and and so anyhow I uh, I didn't work. I worked in there a little bit. Dorothy even went. My wife went in and helped him too, and I and uh, we we enjoyed it. It was fun. And he had other employees. He had about eight employees at one time, mm -hmm. right, John? Yeah. Yeah. That's not yeah. true. Yeah, you didn't work down there. Did and this, uh, I mean, when he had eight employees, then all of a sudden, uh, I don't know, they kept raising his rent. It got up real high. But the whole story is uh, he You're decided. Kind of to yeah, you get uh -huh. This is about you, Dad. It's about you. Yeah. It's about you, not me. Don't bring in the business. Huh? Don't bring in the business. It's about you, not me. Yeah, let, we'll finish off here. Let, let me finish off with uh, the last question. I always like to ask, uh, uh, like to ask you is, how do you think your war years or your your military experience, how do you think that affected your life, changed your life, played a role in your life, or was it just simply a chapter you went through? How do you, how do you, how do you answer that? Do you think? Yeah. Well, the what I'd say is that I I think that the getting discipline from you know, my higher ups like the Powell and Co Powell majors. Uh, Powell was a major, you know, and and uh, overseas. I mean, uh, it was altogether different when he was overseas. I mean, because 
there was none of this stuff of uh, segregation and yeah. things of that sort. Uh, the pilots ate with us, the cows slept like two doors from us, you know, yeah. two tents from us, and, and they, they cooperated with us, they played cards with us, and the co you know, every, we all played cards together and everything, and this, this kind of uh, made me feel, feel pretty good when I knew that they were, they were along with us. On, on, in the war, you know, and and they were ready to protect us and everything. Yeah. But uh, well, how do you how do you think that experience affected your life, or did it? Was it just something you just you feel like you went through, or do you think that that experience no, it, changed or played a role in your life at all? It helped me because I I I hadn't traveled or anything. Yeah. And uh, and it, it taught me how to get around, you know, and and different. Uh, trains, different airports, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and and taking trips and things like that. I, I mean, don't think there's a time that my huh? father. I don't think there's a time that he, even today, a day goes by that he doesn't think about what he did, you know. And I think he's a very caring man because of what he. What you say? Those, those years. She she says that she doesn't think there's a day that doesn't go by that you don't think about those years. Oh that, yeah. 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 Yeah, and and then I I, I know that uh, I mean uh, I I I I knew that I was coming home, and when I was at my old home Pittsburgh, nobody no I was kind of in the way and and not wanted and unwanted you know. And so he became a father that was a really good father. Yeah. Yeah, that was I, full of love, and he's a very good father. Thanks, this. Yeah, I, 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 I knew that Dorothy wanted me because she wow. told me she, yeah. she wanted to marry me. Wow. Now she was a kid then. Don't forget, she's when I married her, she's just turning, going to turn eighteen, and I was twenty-one, I guess, and would be twenty-two. Let's see, man, that wouldn't work, though, would it? Yeah. See, she was going to be 19, I'm sorry. And then I'd be 21. But the whole story is, uh, it, it taught me how to get around, how to meet people. Right, sure. And, and uh, how to get along with people and, and everything. Uh, and, and that way, I mean, I, I, I might have had it rough, but I, I think I held myself pr together think, pretty good. I think you did. I think you did. I mean, I, 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 and I know that, uh, I mean, I did certain things to get these medals, and, and, and uh, I, I haven't even, I never have told Dorothy that I got shot down. She had two brothers in the war. and. And I don't like to brag about it yeah, because yeah. it hurt, kind of hurt her. Now, did she ever talk about it once you guys got back? What she was feeling and going through? Yeah. When she was over there, as far as worry, I mean, she had to be worried. I would imagine. Um, I mean, it, I mean, she, she was, uh, she was, she was worried. Her letters. She wrote me quite a few letters. She sent me seeds so I could plant some. Uh, cucumbers and uh. tomatoes and that, and they never did grow because more time got rain, rain, rain. And they boy shoot the stuff up and it'd be high as the tent. And we, when, all we get is growth, <laughs> no fruit. <laughs> yeah, wow. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if, if, if uh, but I, I was glad to get out of Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, like I, I told my, my, uh, Cousin asked me once. His name was Paul Hertrick. He died recently here, and uh, and he asked me how come I didn't come back to Pittsburgh. You know, because I I could have got back there and I could have got jobs and things like that. But uh, in fact, I was offered a job back there and I didn't take it. Yeah. But uh, and anyhow, the whole whole deal is I I just feel that. Uh, I I was coming into something. I liked the mountains, and and I thought they were really something when I first landed in Fort Collins, yeah. and and uh, 
mom, mom, uh, her mother was real nice to me. I hate to say it, but I mean, she was a different person, but she treated me good. And, and uh, they had a, they had it rough up at the ranch. I mean, they, it wasn't a working ranch where they made money. She had a place where she had tourists come in and then they'd go fishing and things okay. like that. But uh, I, I, her mother passed away and I talked to her before, before she died. In fact, uh, she told me that, she says, she said, Dad, she says, George, my, 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 uh, Dorothy's dad's gone, you know, he's, he's living right now, but he'll be gone. And she said that, that if you do one thing for me, I'll, I really, really will always remember you, even in my death. She said, take care of Dorothy. Oh, wow. Wow. She says, you take care of her. She's my youngest daughter. Yeah. And uh, I told her, I said, I will I'll take yeah. care of her. I'm sure you yeah. and, and I'm going to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good, George. I want to. Uh, hey, I, you want to? I want to thank you for uh, for sitting down to tell your story today. But more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Okay. Well, thank you. That's real nice of you. That's my graduation uh, from grade school. In Green Tree, Colorado. Or uh, Green Tree, Pennsylvania. I'm okay. sorry. That's my high school uh, graduation picture in 1942. That's a picture of me, George Fender, on the top row, second from the left, and my head's bandaged up. And that's, that's a picture of you and your crew, correct? Yes, that's the crew. And then what happened uh, with the bandage? How did you get bandaged up? That's where I got hit in the head with a piece of flak. Oh, is that right? And, is that where you, and that's where you awarded your Purple Heart? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a picture of my heart belongs to Daddy, and it was on one of the airplanes uh, that would fly along in our missions. Uh, the nose art of the airplane? Is it what? The nose art? Is that yeah. A, okay. That's right. That's a picture of my wife. When I was down South Pacific, she sent me a, a picture. And that's the picture you carried around through the war, huh? And I carried it around through the war. I, this is my wife and myself, George Fender, Dorothy Fender, at our wedding, her in her wedding dress in, on September 1st, 1945. That's my Purple Heart that I received from <clears throat> on a mission we got hit with flak and I got hit in the head. How, bad, uh, how badly were you injured? Did it knock you out or anything or how? Uh... Just uh, more so dizziness. Okay. That's all the effect it had on me. It went in right on, right on top of my scalp. And it went in quite, I, I had it in all the way back to, to the, and brought it back with me on a mission. They took Is it out right? up at the nursery. Ah. Up at the affirmative. Has it ever caused you any long-term effects as far as headaches or anything? Not that I know of. Okay, good. That's, this is a picture of our crew, and uh, there's uh, a pilot, co-pilot, engineer, and uh, the uh, bombardier, and navigator, then there's uh, one, two, three, four, five enlisted men. And that's when you were uh, one, two, crew three, of the four. week, huh? Yeah, that's crew of the week, and then we was the best crew on <laughs> later, I don't know if I have a picture of that or not. Okay. And then further down is your 13th Air Force. That's the 13th. Patch. I was a staff sergeant. I was supposed to get tech sergeant, and they never gave it to me. Mm -hmm. They said they'd send it later, and they didn't. Hmm. And then your three uh, medals here. And they, these are three medals here that mm -hmm. we 
have on the list that you have. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's nice. about it there. Okay. This is a picture of the uh, <clears throat> five enlisted men right here in front of our tent on Moratai Island. That's where, it. Where are you in, in there, George? Uh, right here. I'm on, on the lower front okay. row. Okay. This is a picture of Dorothy, my wife, and John, my son. And that's about it. This is a picture of my daughter, Landa Lee. And she gave me these two dollar bills, gold dollar bills. Dollar coins. Yeah, yeah. coins. This is a picture of Fender Realties uh, that we had on, up by our house. And... The little cowboy on there, my wife, she made it. I'll be darned. And drew it up. And I've had it for years, and 23 years in real estate.